to a place of unforgiveness to a place of forgiveness. From a place of destruction to a place of restoration. Father, you change the atmosphere wherever your presence is. Wherever we allow your truth to come forth in our lives and in our homes and in our church, God, you will change the atmosphere with your presence. Father, you have changed the atmosphere in this place. And God, we know that your spirit is with us. Now, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus from every, every hindering spirit that would try to hinder the moving of the gifts that you have given the man of God today. Father, we bind every hindrance. We bind every power that would try to stop. Father, we ask today for a double portion of your anointing upon Pastor David. As he comes, Father, let him have the liberty and the freedom Lord, and when he comes and he stands behind this pulpit, Father, may the atmosphere even change more. May in the spiritual realm all the angels fight off the demon angels that are trying to prevent people from being saved and healed and delivered. And Father, as he comes to speak your word, God, may your word settle upon our hearts and accomplish those things that you want accomplished in our hearts and lives today. And we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory. Let him flow in the gifts that you have given to him through the laying on of hands. Father, let the gifts flow through him today. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've known Brother Diamond for about 15 years now. He's been a close friend. He's been a, a brother in the Lord and uh, been to his home. He's been to my home. And, and I just love him. He, I, lo I love him like a real brother, like a fleshly biological brother. And he means a lot to me, and his friendship means a lot to me, him and his wife and family. So without further ado, we want to give him all the time he needs. Brother Diamond, would you please come take your liberty? Praise God. Uh, uh, Dr. Langevin. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Alicia, how are you doing? I want you to just stretch your hand out toward... Sister Alicia, uh, these are all, this is a sweet, sweet couple. Uh, they're, I, 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 I've just grown to love them. Hallelujah. Her stepdad passed away last night during the service. How many of you know God said, I'll send you a comforter? And a lot of people think we're strange when the comforter comes and comforts and Shouldn't something be wrong with you? You, you, you? But only God can do that. But even with all that, the pain is still real. The emptiness is still real. Come on, somebody. But I know God can touch her supernaturally today. Huh? Darren. Where's Darren? Oh, amen. Well, both of you stand up. Just both of you stand up. La Russe Mendendili Bontakala Husen Engeleho Elesu Numamawa Nisimona Etasa Mama Utakwa Yele Musa Yes Lord let it be from you right now your tenderness your touch in the name of Jesus I pronounce it upon each of them in Jesus name Amen uh, give the Lord a God bless you come on Hallelujah. Uh, you know, you need to be careful when Sister Linda's around. Um, you know, like when the Lord just, just, she just, you know, she just goes out. That's the reason you need to pray for you get in a car with her. They came down and stayed with us, and Dine was going to take her bike riding. And Diane looked around to see where Linda was, and she looked over there, and the bicycle wheel was just going around and around. And Linda was laying in the ditch. And uh, so, uh, uh, true story. That's true. That ain't no lie. That's true. Hallelujah. I prayed in tongues all the way here because I rode with her to church. <laughs> Long as she look, and it doesn't make no difference. You think she might be all right? She's just over there talking, being sweet, and next thing you know, you're in the ditch. <laughs> Hallelujah! Turn around, and tell somebody, say, "I'd rather be here than the jailhouse." <laughs> now slip your hand up and say, "I'd rather be here, sure enough, than in the hospital." 
Uh, I want you to know you are in intensive care. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, there's nobody can take care of you like Jesus. Hallelujah. Can I get a good amen? amen. Well, uh, listen, if you don't like me, uh, blame Dr. Bob. Um, God is doing some great things. Somebody's going to get healed today of an intestinal problem. Yeah, you're going to get touched in your intestines. Hallelujah. But slip your hand up and just say, glory to God, I receive that. Hallelujah. You say, well, I ain't nothing wrong with my intestines. Well, maybe not. Maybe later. Hello? See, a lot of times God will speak something, and if you'll just grab a hold of it and say, I'm holding on to that, hallelujah. I'm healed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, but I just take that and put it in my pocket. Can I get a good amen? amen. Turn around and tell somebody, say, well, how come you don't look this good on Monday? <laughs> I want you to turn in your Bibles, praise the Lord, to Ephesians. I'm going to preach something to you that I know works because it's worked for me for 44 years. If it'll work for me, it'll work for you. You know why? Because it's the Word. The Word is for you. The question is, will you receive it? And here it is. Will you do it? The Bible said don't be a hearer of the Word only but be a doer. I, I've watched this for years. And you'll, you'll preacher or song leader or somebody, uh, they say, well, praise God, everybody give the Lord a clap offering. You'll, be, you'll see people out there, they ain't moving. They don't clap. They'll say, everybody shout. Well, not everybody says it, but I, I say it. Somebody shout, Yeah. Let's try that again. <laughs> and look, if you can't say, you know, like southern folks do, yeah, just say yeah. <laughs> See, we say car. Yeah, we say car. Uh, 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 um, Linda says ka. <laughs> yeah. And she said, we're going to go, we, 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 let's take a ride in the car. I said, the car? What's a car? Is that a scooter or something? What so everybody shout, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ooh. 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 See, oh, yeah, you got it. Hallelujah. I said, that's so silly. I know God uses foolish things to confound the wise. God told me to, there was a lady came in and uh, she had arthritis. She's all, all twisted up. Her name was Sister Ethel. First time she'd ever walked in our church. She was a guest of a friend and she, walked, she, she was over there and she just all, just, just arthritis, crippling arthritis. We was worshiping God and the Spirit of the Lord said, uh, call that sister up and clap your hands over her head. I said, no problem. I said, uh, sister, would you bring your friend with you? She got up real slow, you know, and came down front. She's all crippled. I said, on everybody, I said, do what I'm doing right now. I said, give me a little music, hallelujah. Give me a little up-tempo music, glory to God. And I said, we're just going to clap our hands over her head. I think we begin to sing the song I always sing when the Spirit of the Lord begins to move. If you believe it, I know you can receive it right now, right now, right now. If you believe it, I know you can receive it right now, right now. If you believe it, I know you can receive it. If you believe it, I know you can receive it. If you believe it, I know you can receive it right now, right now. Now, right now. And, and, and oh, we started getting down. Oh, it started getting a little louder. Now, I want you, I can take and introduce you to the lady. See, 
Watch these preachers who tell you stories and they can't introduce you to the people. Unless they did, I, I realize some of you. I want you to know we kept clapping. And I'm telling you, you can start hearing like you crack your knuckles. Well, I can't even crack my knuckle. You could hear it. Honey, they began to crack. I tell you, her hand started getting straight. She started standing up. And I'm telling you, God healed that woman just as just as healed as I was. Hallelujah. And she she started weeping and crying. And from that service on, see, her heart's desire was that she she loved working in her flower bed. She loved working with flowers and stuff. And and after she got healed, we always had a fresh arrangement of flowers. In our pulpit, because God had totally healed Sister Ethel from crippling arthritis. Somebody clap your hands and shout yes! Now what if the people hadn't have done what I told them to do? Sister Ethel would probably still have crippling arthritis. You see, it's the simple things that we overlook. When you read it, do it. Well, I, that just seems so foolish. Do it. That's how you receive a miracle. Ephesians says this. Finally, Ephesians chapter 6, I believe it is. Let me, let, let me make sure I got it right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally. Finally, they, they put it up there. You putting up those, where buddy? Y'all got it? Fine. That says praise the Lord, singing to the Lord a new song. <laughs> yeah, technology, ain't it something? Singing to the new, new song turned into finally. <laughs> finally. My who? Now you reckon that's you? Finally, my brethren, here's a, right to the Ephesians, Apostle Paul is telling them, give them a final instruction. Finally, my brethren, be what? Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. In the power of of his might. That word might means ability. You see, you and I, we created in the image of God. He said that we might be partakers of his divine nature. How many of you want to be a partaker of his divine nature? You see, God's nature abides in you and I. And so if I have God's nature abiding in me, then it means I have God's ability. You and I, we can go out, and uh, we, we can talk to a tree or a mountain, and it ain't going to change. Oh, but if God's ability rises up on the inside of me. Hallelujah. He said, not only did I say unto this tree, and you will do the same under this tree, but you'll be, to be able to say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Slip your hand up and say, I'm not leaving here today until I get some things removed out of my life uh, that's hindering me from getting close. To, if somebody don't shout hallelujah, I'm going to hurt myself. Our problem is we, we, we get so caught up in, in our dilemmas and our situations and our circumstances and, you know, everyday life and, and because they're real. Hello, somebody. They're in our face every day. 
They're in our face when we wake up, and they're in our face when we go to bed. And so we begin to, you know, just look at the problems, listen to the problems, meditate on the problems, instead of allowing God to strengthen us. Come on, somebody say, strengthen me, Holy Ghost, by in the power of his might. I don't know about you, but I'm getting stronger every day. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to talk to you about something that I know works because it's worked for me for 44 years. He said, uh, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on. Everybody say, put on. You see, God not coming to dress you. You got to dress yourself. God has given you the proper clothing, the proper, let me use the word he uses, garments. Come on. Put on, uh, today, uh, you know, when you got up here, uh, I, I got up here, no, I didn't come without a coat. Hello? Because I wanted to put on a jacket, a coat, to keep something off me. The cold, the rain, hello, but I had to put it on. If I don't put it on, then woe be unto me. I have no reason to fuss that my clothes got wet because I didn't put on the raincoat. I can't fuss and gripe and complain and belly ache and everything else if I wind up in a, a, a hospital uh, 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 because I, I almost froze to death. I didn't put on my jacket. I didn't put on my coat to keep the wind. Come on, somebody. You put on something to keep something off. Well, my Lord, I thought I'd get a good amen on that one. But yet, so many Christians go around half naked all the time. I'm telling you. That's saying naked is the same thing as naked. Turn around and tell somebody, say, I hope you ain't half naked. I was at a I got all kind of stories. I love to tell stories. I was talking about naked. I, I had been promoted to a manager uh, when I was, I, was, I was preaching, and I was also selling insurance. And, uh, you, you know, because I didn't want to be in the category of everybody, all them preachers begging, and, you know, I wasn't going to beg. Hallelujah. God, my provider. But most Christians are so stingy, you got to have another job. <laughs> and, um, yeah, what else do you want me to say, uh, Bob? Uh, uh, and so, uh, you know, I was, I was working, and I, I'd go in, I'd say, Hi, are you the owner? I'm here to check with you about the annual parish enrollment of the owners and managers compensation program, and I wonder if you received anything on that in the past few days. As you probably know, owners and managers like yourself, they're not covered by regular workman's comp, are they? Well, we've done something about that. We've designed a plan especially for somebody like you. That's 30-something years ago. I still got it. You was ready to buy it, wasn't you? And so, you know, I was the leader in a sales group, you know, in my, my, my district and everything else, and so they wanted to fly me up to Columbia, South Carolina at the headquarters of Colonial Life and Accident Insurance Company. So we drove up there, and, and uh, man, we, uh, they, they come and picked us up in a big old limousine to take us out to supper that night. I was up on the 17th floor of the Carolina Inn. They come driving up in that limousine. Uh, we we got in there and went down to the Palomino Club, Palomino S- Steakhouse, or what? I, it was Palomina. Uh, Might have been Palomina Barnyard. I don't know, but it was Palomina something. Oh, it was swanky. 
Woo wee! Honey, we walked in there, and there's about four or five of us, and, and, and with the with the uh, vice president of the company. We walked into that lobby area, and they had leather couches, big old leather couches, and 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 leather chairs out in the foyer, you know. Because I'm telling you, it was uptown, and 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 and, and woo had all them had all them free peanuts and everything on the on the uh, 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 a coffee table or, or whatever it was, a table there, you know. Oh yeah, free. Lord have mercy. I said, look at him. Uptown. So we were sitting out there, you know, and uh, they was getting everything ready because, I mean, this is Swankville. You hear me? And so it ain't very long. And uh, and, and here she comes. Got that little, she, 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 she's a little cocktail waitress. And here she, here, here she comes. You know, she come walking, she come walking in, you know, and she said, uh, you know, uh, 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 and, and what would you like, you know, taking drink orders while we waiting? And she had on one of them little, one of them little, one of them little tutu things on. Hello. It wasn't too much. I think that's why they call it two, two. Ain't too much. You know, you can see her cheeks and everything. That's pitiful. You know, and she, yeah, y'all understand what I'm saying. That girl ain't had no clothes. She, she sure couldn't come up here. She'd freeze dead in 30 seconds. <laughs> so she come through there. You know, she had a little, had a little thing on. And she said, and what would you like? You know, all these guys, all these heathens. And they said, well, I, uh, uh, well I, I'd like a, a, a straight up bourbon. And, and, and what would you, and what would you like? Now, here's, here's the first one. Now, now, and and he's he, he doing like this. Little devil. And, 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 and what would you like? Well, I'd like scotch on the rocks. And and what would you like? Uh, I'd like a Bloody Mary. And, and, and what would you like? I think I'd just take a Diet Coke. And, 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 and she finally made it to me. I was waiting on her. All these others about to fall out in the aisle, you know, from looking and gawking. And, and she said, and, and the vice president, you know, they're all, and she said, and what would you like? I said, I'd like for you to go get some clothes on, you naked whoremonger, you. Well, that blew that up. <laughs> I want you to know they never did get their drinks, honey. She disappeared, and they come in there and got us out of that lobby. <laughs> Set us all down. And as usual, I mean, I'm, I'm used to this. Me and Diane. We go in somewhere, you know, and, you, you know, we sit down. We just nice and... and uh, you know, we're waiting for other people to come sit down by us, you know, and talk with us. Uh, that don't happen. They all go to another table or they all get on the other end of the table. And so I sit down and there I am. Of course, they all look and say, my God, I can't believe he did that. You go get some clothes on, you naked whoremonger. So they're all upset. So I'm just sitting there. Mm-hmm. They sit down at the end of the table and they start chit chat. Well, you know what they're talking about. They're talking about me. Yeah. And that nutcase, who is he? We've heard about him. So they come take our orders. And, you know, there's people everywhere. And uh, so the Lord spoke to me. They over there talking about me and other people, you know, they mind their own being. And the Lord said, uh, You know, son, there's a lot of people in here. Why don't you sing them a song? And I said, yeah, why don't I? I said, what song should I sing? It just came to me. I, may, I You know, I am a songwriter. 
Nobody ever reads them, but I may I am a songwriter. <laughs> so I, it just hit me. I, I, I said, yeah. I said, I got a song. <laughs> and they're all, you know, everybody's talking. Everybody's around. Tables all around us, you know. I'm sitting there, and I just said, <clears throat> I said, yeah, this will be good. So I start going. You know, I'm loud. Yeah, can you, you do really? And so I, I start out, I, I, I said, R, R, E, R, E, P, E, N, T, R, E, P, E, N, T, R, E, P. E-N-T-R-E. And I noticed <laughs> there was four people sitting at a chair and they was watching us. It, it just kind of catty cornered to me. And you, you've seen people. They want to be in on your conversation. So I kept getting a little louder. R-E-P-E. -E. person behind us started leaning over in his chair, you know, trying to eavesdrop, you know. But that lady right at the table, she was trying to read my lips. And I kept getting a little louder. R E P E N T R E P. Yeah, R E R E P E. -E. And she was going. <laughs> and she got it. And when she said, she said it out loud when she figured it out, she said, repent? <laughs> I said, yes, ma'am, R-E-P-E-N-T. Everyone needs to repent of their sin. You ain't never seen so many people eat their supper so fast in all your life. <laughs> Can I get a good amen? amen. Proverbs 24.10. Proverbs 24.10, I'm talking about you got to put on something to keep off something. Ephesians goes on down and, and, and says, put on, therefore, the whole armor of God. Proverbs says this, if thou faint... In the day of adversity, am I talking to anybody here who goes through some problems? Am I talking to anybody in here who faces some difficulties, hard times? Come on. If thou faint in the day of adversity, in the time of your trouble, in the time of your darkness, there's a reason that you faint. There it is. Thy strength is small. Nehemiah says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Look in your Bibles. Is this all right? Look in your Bibles. Uh, Isaiah 52 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall be no more into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Awake, awake. Put on. Everybody say, put on thy strength. Isaiah 61.3 says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Turn in your Bibles to Second Chronicles chapter 20. You know, if you call me, I've got a recording on my phone. 
and it'll say this, something like, hello, sorry, I missed you. You know, whatever, I try to make it lively and, you know, I'm not going to put on there. You have reached 225-955-2319. If you need to schedule your funeral service, call me. Hello, praise God, I'm glad, I, I'm so sorry I missed you. And I said, uh, I want to hear from you, praise God, leave a, leave a message or, 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 or whatever, you know. And, and remember, if you keep shouting, your walls will come down. See, you lose your shout. Somebody said, well, you know, I don't believe. Just live your old miserable life then. Just go on. I'm not going to argue with you. Just be, just be miserable and, and depressed and, 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 and all, you, you, you know, all bummed out and everything else and wished it would get better and wished I could have a break. No, uh, you can get a break. God showed you how to do it. Come on, give me a good amen. So he says here, uh, uh, he's given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The Bible said he has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise. I tell people all the time, how come you're not singing? You know, how many of you growing up, uh, you know, whether it was rhythm and blues, whether it was country, whether it was, you, you know, Tony Bennett, whether it was uh, whoever. How many of you grew up with some music around you? Hold your hand if you grew up with music around you. And, and, and you had a song. You, you know, whatever. My, mine was, uh, devil with the blue dress, blue dress, blue dress, devil with the blue dress on. Fee, fee, five, five, four, four, four. Look at Miss Molly now. Here she come. Wearing a wig hat and shades to match. Wow, got high heel shoes and an alligator hat. Wasn't we all used to, uh, I, I used to, now other people didn't listen to this kind of music. I, I listened to it. Hey, Chantilly Laser had a pretty face, had a ponytail a hanging down, a wiggle and a walk, a wiggle and a talk. Wow, ah, made the world go round. Come on, guys. Don't, don't sit out there like you so holy you didn't have, you, you, you know. Uh, uh, you, love, you love that wiggle and walk. Come on. You follow that wiggle every now and then. Not, not me. I, uh, no, I, I, wasn't in, I wasn't infatuated by, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, some woman. Well, you need to come down here and let me cast a devil out of you. You're probably a queer. <laughs> That always goes over real good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I got news for you, fellas. If you're, if you're attracted to a man, you got a devil. Mm-hmm. Might be in one here this morning. Mm-hmm. See, I know the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Your mother called you Sam because that's who you are, not sissy. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let me take this off. It's getting a little hot in here. <laughs> Besides, if I have to rumble with somebody, I want to be free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put on the garment of praise. I want to encourage you to put on your beautiful garments. Praise for or instead of the spirit of heaviness. Could you help me out one more time? How many of you have ever felt heavy? Just felt depressed? Just felt like, hmm, just ain't a good day. Just not going right. Just, I, I don't feel like doing anything. I, I, I don't know why. That's a good time to go put on some praise. That's a good time to open your mouth, and if it ain't nothing else, make a joyful noise. Here's what I found out in 44 years. This book is true. It's worked, and I know what it is. That story I just told you about Columbia, South Carolina. Marvelous 
marvelous presence of the Lord. People got saved. It, it was great. And on the third day, my telephone rang. I was in on the 17th floor. And my telephone rang, and I picked it up, and it was my sister-in-law. And she said, David, Buffy's dead. That was my first little daughter. And she was three months and nine days old. She never got bigger than my hand. Of course, we're trusting God never. So I know what I know what darkness is. I know what pain is. I know what emptiness is. I don't preach things that I haven't lived. And I said, don't tell me that. And she said, David, Buffy's dead. I said, look, don't, don't tell me that. I said, no. She said, David, Buffy's gone. I said, put Diane on the phone. She was broken, weeping. I said, Diane, it's going to be all right. And I began to weep. I said, it's going to be all right. I said, it's going to be okay. Jesus is Lord. I said, I'll get a flight home. I, I don't know how I'll get home, but I'll get home. I, I, I said, let me, let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch dying right now. She said, okay, I'll, I'll be waiting on you. So I got on the phone, called downstairs. I said, I need a cab. Hung up the phone, and here come the devil. Ha! How are you going to do now? Man of God, oh, you're going to shout some more? Uh, what, what are you going to do now? Your baby's dead. You tell people how great uh, your God is and how he touches people and works miracles. What about your baby? She's dead. Can't tell you the despair, the emptiness. That just nothing. <laughs> I said, let me tell you something, devil. You are a liar. He la nambro hombre se tele mo mama risi he mama tele mo sutu uba manengi esi le mo nu sile oh and here's the devil oh you think that's gonna work your baby's dead your baby's dead you fool listen to you you idiot here you are your baby's dead handila homo ma seni kalano I said let me tell you something devil. If you think uh, I'm not going to praise the Lord because the Bible said for me to praise him in and for all things, I don't understand, but I know one thing. I'm going to... About that time a knock came on the door because I'm so loud. Uh, honey, they hearing it everywhere. They think a man's gone crazy in the room. And, and the bell boy comes up and opens the door. Handila, handala. Uh, it scared him so bad he went over and started punching that button on that elevator. He said, well, well, I just want you to know the cab's coming. He got on the elevator. Now, I want you to know, I don't think these windows open, do they? These solid windows, right? Listen, had a, huh? Well, I'll just say they didn't open. It can't open. It's just a solid window. No way you can crank them open or open them. Honey, I want you to know I'm praising God. In about 15 minutes, that those curtains start doing this. What was it? It was the wind of God that blew through that wall and that window. Hallelujah, it saturated me. <laughs> and honey, I did get loud. I did get exciting. Hallelujah. And I want you to know I took my Bible. I went downstairs and 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 uh, they had they, they they got the company plane ready for me to fly me home. And when I got in the in, in, in the taxi cab to go to the airport, I put my Bible on top of the car. 
got my other stuff in the car, forgot that my Bible and the pages was open to the wind. And so we, man, that, that guy was whipping in and out of traffic. He, you know, he's honking his horn. He, he's taking me to the airport. And all of a sudden, a police officer pulled up. And, of course, they had, they had, to, they had radioed the police and what have you about this. You know, we got a cab. He, he's going to be taking an emergency to the... And, and, and he pointed up on the roof. So we rolled the window down. He said, there's something on top of the roof. And the guy said, and I said, Oh, that's my Bible. Now, how many of you know I needed my Bible? Honey, he's whipping in and out. That Bible ain't moved. Hello, somebody. And, and I got, he pulled over. I walked out. I want you to know there wasn't a page uh, 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 blown open. There wasn't a wrinkle in there. That, it ain't moved. Uh, I believe God had his hand on that Bible. Hallelujah. Oh, and, and I got on that plane and make a long story short, we, we flew home that night, got there early in the morning. And that day, the next morning, because we had the arrangements, made the arrangements, the next morning, which was a Friday, we buried our little girl. And I got in a car as early in the morning, about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, we had the funeral. I got in my car, me and Diane and them, and we drove seven hours to Atlanta, Georgia. We got out, I went up on the stage to hold the meeting, and I began to sing this song. I feel good, I feel good, every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. I ain't never looked back. Never grieved, never, I, I grieved very little bit, you know what I'm saying, but I, I wasn't depressed, I, I didn't, you know, have to go back and sit around at days. And, no, I just, I just moved on with the Lord, just kept singing. You know why? Because I'd read enough about the book to know where my daughter was. And I, t- I, I never forget, I tell the, I, I, re- I still remind her, I said, uh-huh, every time the devil tries to come, try to start some mess with me, you know. I said, let me tell you something, too late! Already got a deposit. I said, I got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and Buffy waiting on me. Hallelujah. Uh, you, you're wasting your time to come attack me. And I said, matter of fact, let me sing you another song since you love my voice so much. Well, oh, he's gone. Can I get a good amen? You see, if it'll work for me, it'll work for you because God's given you a new song. You got to get up and put on your garment of praise. You say, but Brother David, I, I can't sing. I'm not. I, uh, that's why it says a joyful noise. You can hum. <laughs> you sound so bad, the devil sure ain't coming around. Oh, everybody say, oh. I'm going to help you, see. Say, oh. Oh, hey, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, ah, ah, um, 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 he said, Brother David, you're so crazy. Uh, I, no, I ain't crazy. God said do it. Jehoshaphat. Ooh, somebody shout amen. Here's the story. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Said they were surrounded by the enemy. Children of Israel were surrounded by the enemy. They felt like they were overwhelmed. As a matter of fact, I think the word in there is overwhelmed. But how many of you, anybody ever felt like you was overwhelmed? Because it seems like everywhere you look, there's a problem. It's not going right. I don't know what I'm going to do. Matter of fact, Jehoshaphat said, we don't know what to do. 
Anybody ever been in that situation in your life? You just don't feel like you know what to do. I've been there. And it seems like, man, surely there's a break somewhere. Surely there's an escape somewhere. Well, the enemy was over here. The enemy was behind them. The enemy was in front of them. The enemy was over on this side. They were surrounded. Anybody ever felt like you've been surrounded by the host of hell? Well, you need to do exactly. See, I've learned this. I heard this a long time ago, early in my ministry. A preacher said, if you want to get the experience that you see these people got, then do what they did. I said, I got it. Because the Bible says everything that was written aforetime was written for our learning and our exhortation that we through the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. I want you to know this is an instruction booklet. Has anybody ever been like me? I didn't read the instructions and I thought I could put it together without the instructions uh, to save a little time. And so when I put the bicycle together, it wasn't a bicycle, it was a bomb. <laughs> How many times did I have to, oh, and usually, usually it's one boat. Usually it's one little simple thing that we overlook. But when we go back and we read the instructions and you put that one little Heart. Somebody shout hallelujah. One little element, one little piece in the right place. Lord, have mercy. It works. Hallelujah. It does exactly what the, uh, the video said it do. It does exactly what the book said it do. But if I try uh, to skip a part, even as minute it, it may seem, it won't work. Amen. Woo! Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We can't leave out the instruction manual. Everything that was written aforetime was written for my learning that I might have through the comfort of of the scriptures, hope. Wow. So they're surrounded. <laughs> they're surrounded. They don't know what to do. First thing you need to do, do exactly what Jehoshaphat did. He turned to the Lord. Come on, somebody. He turned to the instruction manual, if you, if you will. And I love this part right here. And he said, and he feared. Anybody remember 9-11? Hello? Wasn't too far from here, was it? Churches filled up. Why? Because they love God? Eh, wrong answer. Fear had gripped everybody. When's the next attack? What's fixing to happen next? And so, lasted about three months. But you see, you need to always be at a place. I do not have a spirit of fear. I'm not talking about that. And that ain't what that's saying. It said he feared. In other words, I can't handle this on my own. This is something too big for me. And he said, but I better go to the one I know who can help. And so he said he feared and he turned his face, got out on his knees, put his face to the ground and cried out to God. 
When's the last time you found yourself on your face crying out to God? Oh, I'm going to do this on my own. I can figure this out. I can handle this. I don't need God. One day you're going to wish you had God. This is another message in itself, but oh, the Bible says a day is coming. Oh, it's about, the Bible said, oh, 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 there'll come a day and you will cry unto me. You will call out. And you know what God says? God says, I'm going to laugh. Lord, will you help me? I'm devastated, God. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 No. I won't help you. <laughs> oh, you laughed at me. Oh, you wouldn't follow me. Oh, you wouldn't obey me. You didn't want to serve me. <laughs> oh, but you need me now, don't you? <laughs> Forget it. Read your Bible. Oh, it's quiet in here now. You know, because all we've ever heard... No matter where you at, Jesus loves you, and Jesus will help you, and his open arms are waiting on you. All you got to do is call out to Jesus, and he'll be there, and, and he'll help you. Uh, that, that is true to a point. Where's that point at? I don't. Where's that line to cross? I don't know, but I know it's in there. I'm not going to take a chance of crossing that line and say, oh, Lord. Lord, I'm a knothead. Lord, I'm ignorant. I'm crazy. I'm dumb. I, I, but I'm not going to mock you. I, I, and, and I know all to come to church. And I know all to read my Bible. And I know all to follow you. And, 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 but I don't know why I don't. But I, I want you to know I ain't going to cuss you. I ain't going to. Don't forget me. And it'll probably extend your time a little bit. But there will come a point that God will only put up with you so long and he'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. I'm so glad that Friday night, I said, when he knocked on the heart of my door, I said, come on in, Jesus. This is a nasty house. It is upside down. It smells like beer and whiskey and wine and vomit and throw up and cussing and, 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 and railing and, 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 and filthiness and, and everything else but if you want to come on into this house just come on in hallelujah I'm not going to shut the door just step over all the trash that you find in my heart because there's plenty there and he said don't worry hallelujah I got some angels who can clean this thing up hallelujah I'll clean you up and let me tell you something don't worry about the filthiness and it's never thing. I'll take my precious blood. Hallelujah. And I'll wash this place and I'll make it white as snow. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Do you remember the day he came into your house? Hallelujah. You opened the door of your heart and it's never been the same again. Can I get a good hallelujah now? Let me finish. Who'll give me five more minutes? Five, 10, 15, 20. I got plenty of time. Okay. So Y'all fall for it every time. Not you, Alicia. You quit raising your hand 10 years ago. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and so he said, Lord, what are we going to do? And the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to get all the singers and the dancers. I want you to put them out front. Are y'all listening to me? He said, and tomorrow, go ye out how many of you know you can't go out unless you get up let me say it again how many of you know you can't go out unless you get up what did we read a while ago awake awake arise come on somebody you see God's done his part now he's saying will you do your part I've given you everything you Need. I have equipped you with every tool you need. Now get up and go out against them. Let me tell you how you go out against your enemies. Who's come to destroy you? He said, put all your singers and praisers out front. Amen. 
in the Bible said, and when they began to sing, then the Lord, hello, we do our part first. Don't worry, God will do his. You got to get up, put on your garment of praise, you begin to sing, then the Bible said, then God set ambushments against the people and destroyed their enemies. I want you to know God will destroy your poverty. God will destroy your headaches. God will destroy your aches and pains and sicknesses and diseases. God will destroy them if you would dare put on your garment. And I'll close in saying this. The Ark of the Covenant was God's presence, God's power. As long as the children of Israel had the Ark of the Covenant, they won every battle that they ever faced. They were never defeated in anything, and all their needs were supplied. The story goes how two wicked boys of Eli thought they could just take the presence of God out into the battlefield, and God would win it for them. Hello, somebody. No, no. Uh, uh, you can tote your Bible and you, you can have your songbook and everything else, but I want to tell you, if you live in sin, it ain't going to work for you. Just because you got a Bible, just because you go to church, just because you sing in the choir, if you are living in the world and living ungodly, I can promise you it ain't going to work for you. They thought the ark would work for them because God won every battle. Well, you know the story was captured. Story goes, and they went and got it back, and here comes David. I'm closing. Brother Bob, give me some closing music. I, I, woo -hoo. Now, don't do like David and Michael and play good golly, Miss Molly. Uh-uh. You need to start out slow. I've got, got to have a little while to shut this thing down. David Michael gets up there and just starts beating the fire out of it like I ain't got no time left. Say, Dr. Bob, you're so good. You know, not only can the guy preach, not only can the guy teach, he can play, and he can sing. I don't know why God wouldn't give me something like that. But that's all right, I'll use what I got. Ah! That's what I got. Uh, Y'all know where they got that goat screaming from, huh? That's my voice. There's bring, there's bringing the ark back. The presence and the power of God. 32,000 musicians. The Bible said they were singing. But the religious wife was sitting up in the window. I can't believe this. David was out there leaping and dancing and praising God with the music and the singers. Glory of God was so present. His wife sitting up in the window. Lord have mercy. Look at that fool down there. The Bible said when it got back, David returned to bless his household. And his wife met him at the door. What's the matter with you? All that leaping and waving your arms and shouting and singing. He looked at her and said, Honey, I didn't do this for you. I did this for the Lord. And he said, You think you've seen anything? You ain't seen nothing yet. 
I will be even crazier than this. And here's the end of it. How many of you know David's life was blessed? Was his wife? Uh uh. The Bible said she never had a child, she was barren her whole life. I refuse to be barren. I'm going to have gifts and abilities and talents and blessings and healings. Come on, somebody, in my life. I'm not going to sit in the window and criticize. I think I'm going to just go out and get in the middle of the street. Hallelujah. I think I'll just go be a participator instead of a spectator. Can I get a good amen from somebody? I'm here to tell you that in these closing hours that we're living in, you and I, we need to get in the street. We need to lift up our voice. The Bible said when they went and got the ark, I want you to count with me. Can you count with me? Every step I take, would you count? Their care, the presence of God is upon them. They're carrying the ark of the Lord. The presence and the power of God is with them. It's all over them. Hold on, guys. Set it down. Let the just sit it down for a minute. And let's have a praise break. Woo! Read it. The Bible said, they couldn't walk six steps without having a praise break, without saying, Thank you, Lord. You saved my soul. Hallelujah, Lord, you've blessed me. God, you've kept me. God, you've opened doors. God, you've just made a way when there was no way. I couldn't, I can't take another step in life until I have a little praise break. Until I thank you for what you've done in my life. Oh, when's the last time you had a praise break in your life? How many hours do you go? How many days do you go until you praise the Lord? Until you take a little time out of your busy schedule? Come on, somebody. You need to learn how to take a praise break and we're all busy we're all busy school and work and families and come on but don't you ever get too busy when you're at work just say excuse me I gotta go to the washroom Oh, yes, Lord. I thank you. Praise God for what you've done in my life. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost. I thank you, Lord, that you've supplied all of my need. You drive an hour's drive or take a little time, praise God, and have a little praise break. Now, be careful, you like to fall out like Linda. <laughs> May not make it. Has this helped you? I, I'm just telling you what the book says. Now, guess you know what it says. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. You don't have to praise. You don't have to shout. You don't have to clap your hands. You don't have to sing a song. You, I mean, God gives you a choice. But I'm just telling you that you need to learn. Don't go too long in life without a praise break because you will see God show up and smack your enemies somebody shout hallelujah give the Lord a clap offering somebody is there anybody here you've been suffering intestinally anybody you've had problem with intestinally your stomach in you. Come here. Who else? Anybody else? Come here.
stand right there. Anybody else, you've suffered any kind of intestinal problems? Urabalian Taramahanda, Lord. Touch. Lord, have mercy in the name of Jesus. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, thank you right now, Lord, for your touch. In praise in Jesus' name. Urabati Alamahanda, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your touch. Give the Lord another clap offering. Come on. Hallelujah. Go check it out. Amen. Let's go. You need to touch. Nelson, Hara, Atila, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you praise for it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give the Lord another clap offering, everybody. Bow your head with me. Just